welcome, friends, and happy Easter. He is risen. And you say, he is risen indeed. It's a traditional Easter greeting, so let's try it again. He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Excellent. Well, welcome to our godly playtime. We are not in church, but we are gathered together, being the church in our own homes. And so, let's light our Jesus candle. Remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. And wherever we go, the Holy Spirit goes with us. So let's have our three breath prayer to start our time. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, today is finally the day. Easter is here. We have been getting ready and thinking about the mystery of Easter for such a long time and today, finally, it is Easter. And so we have a wonderful story to tell you about. Easter changes everything. We've had purple up until now, our time of preparation, and now we have the color white. What should we put on our square? We're going to put the cross. The cross is a symbol to Christians all over the world that Jesus died for their sins. But when I look at the cross, Jesus isn't there anymore. Jesus is alive. But Jesus' death and resurrection give each one of us hope for the future. We have new life through Jesus, and we have hope that God will make all things new. Easter is a celebration of new life, new beginnings for each one of us. And so, we put the cross. But there's more. And today, we're going to have the story of Easter. The story of Easter is so important in the Bible that all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, tell us about Jesus coming into Jerusalem, the Last Supper, his trial, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So we're going to have the story of Easter. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. He brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, Jesus replied, If they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. So Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. 
On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So Peter and John did as Jesus had directed them. They left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until the day that I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, about a stone's throw beyond them, he knelt down and prayed. Abba, Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away for a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes the betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you've come out with swords to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all of the disciples deserted him and fled. The detachment of soldiers, with its commander and the Jewish officials, arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to the high priest, and all the chief priests and elders and the teachers of the law came together. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from the priest to the palace of the Roman governor Pilate. By now it was early morning, and they began to accuse him. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? But the people kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He surrendered Jesus to their will. As the soldiers led him away, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, who was passing by on his way in from the country. 
and they forced him to carry the cross. A large number of people followed him, including the women who mourned and wailed for him. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they crucified him, and with two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross above his head. They placed the charge written against him that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then when they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots to see what each would get. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. Many women were there watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were there also. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus then called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks were split in half. When the centurion and those who were with him guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified. And the Roman centurion said, seeing what had happened, surely this man was the son of God. He praised God and said, surely this was a righteous man. Now there was a man named Joseph of Arimathea who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. He was a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. He himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Then Joseph took it down, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his, Jesus' body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the mother of James and Salome, went to look at the tomb. They brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. On the first day of the week, very early, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb? But there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. And suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Why do you look for the living among the dead? They asked the women. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then the women remembered his words. 
The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out, Rabboni, which means teacher in Aramaic. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told him that he had said these things to her. And that is the story of Easter. You can find those coloring pages on the PazNavs webpage if you'd like to color your own story of Easter. And I wonder, what was your favorite part of that whole story? My favorite part is when it says in the Bible that the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. And it's almost like God's hand reached down into the temple, that place where Jesus as a boy had stayed and talked to the priests, the place that he called his father's house, the place where Jesus had taught so many people. No longer was there a division between the people and God in the Holy of Holies, but the temple veil was torn in two. And that reminds us that we can come directly to God, our Father. When we pray, we're speaking directly to him. And that's my favorite part. This week, you can draw a picture of your favorite part. You can talk to your family about your favorite part. And remember the story of Easter. Well, let's go ahead and pray the Lord's Prayer together. Ready? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The cross reminds us about God's power, the power over sin and death. Jesus is not here, just as the angel said. Jesus is alive. Today is Easter, and this starts a whole new season in our Christian calendar. We've been having Lent to get ready for Easter, and now, because Easter is so important, it's such a big holiday, we can't put it into just one Sunday, and so we have six Sundays of Eastertide, or Easter time season, and all the way they lead to Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes down. And so, as we change our light, we look forward to Pentecost. 
we remember that Jesus is the light of the world and the light did not go out and stay out, but the light shines always. And even as the light changes, we remember that the Holy Spirit goes with us and is with us always. You can find some more Easter stories on the Paznaz Family Life YouTube channel, and you can hear all the different parts of the story of Easter. So God bless you, have a wonderful week, and I'll see you back next Sunday.